Throughout history, many wars have played out on American soil. The American Revolution, the Civil War, the War on Poverty, as championed by LBJ, the War on Drugs, as championed by Nixon and later Reagan, the War on Christmas, as championed by Bill O'Reilly. Monday Night Raw was referred to as Raw is War, as championed by Vince McMahon, a wrestling player. And one of the most important wars in education right now are the reading wars. And when I say reading wars, I refer to the debate that has been going on for many years, whether whole language or phonics instruction is the best practice for teaching literacy. Phonics instruction is considered a bottoms-up approach. Kids have to learn the basic skills of letter-sound correspondence, the alphabetic principle, in order to decode larger words and make meaning of those words. Important people in the phonics movement include Skinner, a behaviorist, um, Rudolph Flesch, who I'll talk about later, um, Janie Chaw, Reed Lyon, I'll talk about all those people later as well. Whole language is sometimes considered a top-down approach, although other studies kind of claim that is not the, the case. Um, is literary instruction that is fostered by immersion and text in words. Uh, they said that developments in reading, writing, speaking uh, are interrelated. And some people say that the ideas of whole language instruction can be based on the earliest construct constructivists and unfoldment theory theorists such as Rousseau and Comenius. Some of the famous whole language um, inspirations, I guess I could say, are Vygotsky, and McKay Hall Halliday, who was a linguist, Ken and Yetta Goodman, and Frank Smith, I'll talk about Ken Goodman and Frank Smith later, Louis Rosenblatt, Pulled Away and Clay, and also Bill Honig, who I will talk about bit more in detail. He was kind of a champion in the public sector for uh, English instruction. When literacy instruction started out and kids started moving into schools and out of home schools, we used them ducky readers. That was about the early 18th century. They were basils. They emphasized sounds of letters and words. And we started to kind of move away with that, with the progressive education uh, ideals of Dewey. And we, pay, we push for more interest-based um, interest instruction. Um, there were still a lot of basils in this time. And then around the 1950s, that was um, influenced by behaviorism. You got the Dick and Jane readers. Um, I will show you a picture of these on the next slide. These are the Dick and Jane readers. You can see, come Dick, come and see. Come, come. Come and see. Come and see spot. Look, spot. Oh, look. Look and see, O-C. As you can see, they're kind of just repeated words um, aimed at getting you to memorize what they mean. And there's pictures there to aid you. Uh, you can see that these are very authentic literature materials, not very literacy rich, not really sentences even. Uh, it's kind of repeated words. Uh, so the goal of that is just to get you to kind of memorize words and memorize, uh, kind of get your word inventory out. Not very good. And now I'm going to get into the reading wars, um, which is kind of the back and forth debate um, between politicians, educators, and theorists um, whether whole language or phonics instruction is the best approach to teaching. It's important to note that this is an event of political and scientific significance. Um, everyone has their different events that they point to as being important. I have some of these that I laid out for you I'm following this. But um, it happened with uh, you know, lobbyists and representatives and state, state senators and national senators. This was a political movement. Um, some people for, supported Fox, some supported whole language. Um, it's also scientific in the fact that theorists argued um, on the basis of whole language and 
phonics in the classroom. Uh, you know, very prestigious colleges and universities. There's a bunch of academic argument about this. Horace Mann, um, in the early 19th century, kind of rallied against phonics. This was very, very early dissenting opinion against uh, teaching out the alphabetic principle. And in 1948, uh, William Gray also went against phonics. This was kind of rebutted by Rudolf Flesch in 1955 when he wrote Why Johnny Can't Read. And what this did is this advocated um, an approach for phonics because he said the reason that poor little Johnny couldn't read is because he couldn't decode the words. If you could decode the words, you could read and develop meaning. He advocated for phonics instruction. Jeannie Chaw coined the term the Great Debate. She said that early phonics instruction significantly impact gains made in comprehension by the time of children, children in fourth grade. Um, she released a study that said that when kids had a good understanding of phonics and a basis in phonics instruction, it helped out their literacy learning in the long term. A, a lot of whole language theorists, theorists have rebutted this theory. Kind of an ongoing trend when a famous phonics study comes out, a lot of whole language theorists will say that the study is flawed, or that the study uh, does not stand up, it can't be reproduced. It's kind of an ongoing trend. In the 1970s, you have Ken Goodman and Frank Smith, the founders of the psycholinguistic slash whole language movement. Um, a good quote by Goodman is that reading is a psycholinguistic guessing game. Smith said that, uh, Frank Smith argued that Phonics instruction rules are, are too complex. A lot of there's a lot of exceptions to the rules of phonics. The English language is very complicated. So in order for a reader to become efficient, they didn't necessarily need to know all these rules. And Stanovich later came out with a study that kind of disproved that whole language was a top-down approach because he said that struggling readers rely more on context um, to decode words. Um, and those with phonemic awareness um, are good readers and can, are able to develop meaning because they're able to re read more fluidly. Um, so even struggling readers don't necessarily sound it out. They use context. Whole language gained a lot of steam in California politics in the 80s. Their superintendent, Honig, uh, supported it. And he was actually very famous in education. He had a famous case he brought to the Supreme Court about um, the change of placement for uh, suspensions in education, especially those with, with special needs, um, which went to, all the way to the Supreme Court. So he's been pretty instrumental in education for a long time at this point, and he, he worked his way up to the superintendent of California education. He supports whole language in the 80s. He, he supports the ideals of Goodman and Smith, and there's a little picture of a reading on the beach I lived in California. But in the 90s, you see that uh, there was a decline in test scores. Because of this, of course, all of the legislators blamed it on whole language instruction and said that they needed to go back to phonics, because that's kind of the, the proven method. You see this a lot of times when, when there seems to be um, a struggling district, struggling reader in a classroom, you tend to overwhelm them with phonics because that's kind of the tried and true method and that's one that's kind of the most research backed. Um, so many people left California after this, um, after the legislators pushed for um, phonics. And Honig said it was um, based on a lack of research, empirical data. And that's kind of the curse of the progressive movement. It's not really based by a bunch of research like the phonics movement is because um, they're kind of anti-scientific. They believe that reading and developing meaning is something that uh, occurs naturally, and that's always been a debate. Um, I think that ultimately the, uh, the state is now back to a balanced literacy approach, but I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Reed Lyon um, was the National Institute of Health and Child Behavior. He funded a lot of studies. He was a phonics backer. He uh, lobbied senders to back phonics and got a lot of support for the move. Out of No Child Left Behind came the National Reading Panel in 2001 and they said that 
phonics had a really big impact on early learners, but not later learners. They said it should never be a complete dominant program in a classroom. They argued for a balanced lit literacy approach. And they said that fluency instruction and phonemic awareness helped to develop reading practice. Not a whole lot um, of new information come out of that, but it did argue against um, using one or the other whole language or phonics exclusively. And this brings us to the present day, the Common Core. It's kind of a balanced literacy uh, curriculum or, or standards. Um, what you see is kind of, I have an example of Common Core for second grade. There's a mixture of phonics and whole language elements like letter sound, identifying prefixes and suffixes, vowel correspondence, and that's phonics, and then also uh, reading for purpose, understanding, self correcting yourself to make meaning. Those were more whole language elements. So my two cents here is not much has changed. Uh, we still hold phonics instruction as valuable intervention and the whole language as something to get comprehension gains. I think it's up to the teacher to decide what the students need. Uh, use the shotgun approach. So try a bunch of different things and see what works. But the main thing about that is be scientific. Have data drive instructions. So uh, really, really track the numbers. Uh, how are students improving? What can you do to manipulate the student's scores, improving on comprehension tests and decoding tests? And see what works the best, and see what interventions are tried and true and work for your class. So my final question is to think about, um, do you support the Common Core? Do you think it's going to solve these issues? Um, what do you think about phonics and home language instructions? What do you dis dislike or like about the theories? And what does the future hold for this debate? Also, another one that I didn't mention is, is there any other theories you know about that will help shape your instruction? Um, that's all I got for the reading wars, and look forward to the discussion that will follow. Thanks.